What inspired me to do this painting was I always wanted to be, I loved the flower power area. I was very young at the time and I was fascinated by this, if you're going to San Francisco, you wear some flowers in your hair and all of that kind of thing. So my cousin in America, who was a few years younger than me actually, had one of these dresses. So she sent it over to me when we were talking about the flower power stuff. So I was a wannabe flower person, too conservative to be one. And Liam, let's say Liam, I got this shirt for Liam and I made him wear it at a fancy dress thing that we went as a flower power people. So then one day I was rooting in our dressing up box and I thought I'm going to do a painting of Liam and I as wannabes, flower power wannabes. Liam never wanted to be, this was in my head actually. So there it is, I started it and I wanted to do it in a cartoon style that it was kind of flat looking. And um, that's why this is so, you know, so flat looking. And then Liam, when he saw it, decided he'd take over. So he started with his quirky style of this kind of a nose and mouth and the ear. And the oil painting was a bit too, um, too much too many brushes to be washing out and tissue just with his, you know, his one side was just too awkward. So he handed it back to me and now I have to finish it. And I'm kind of winging it, I think at this stage. I was buying the photograph of us when we were young and beautiful. <laughs> If I was to say to you, what inspires you and what do you like to paint? Yeah, what inspires you? Feeling. Feelings? Yes. Twenty years ago, you were fine and then you had a stroke, yeah. isn't that right? Golf. And fall. It's it's hard. Yeah. Tell me about Munster. <laughs> Munster, they're no oh, either. They were they're good, good, good. Are you a big fan of Munster? Oh, no, hot, my very hot, Munster, my. God, the, the monster. Yeah, what inspired me to do this? I paint what is within my life now, or what is missing from my life. Um, this painting here is called X on the Dance Floor. And what I was trying to do was capture the feeling of being in a dance floor with hundreds of strangers around you and feeling that oneness, that connection. That's what makes clubs and music so magical, is this connection with everything and with everybody in a world that's often quite hostile. Here, it's not. I suppose when I see these images, and I know this young boy, and he's a very out and proud young man, and he's only 21 or 22 or something, and there is that sense of, I don't know if it's envy. You know, wow, you know, if I had been like that at that age, and how wonderful that would have been, you know, but at the same time, he's living in a different world now, and he's lucky enough that he can live his life freely and beautifully, as I would see it, without having to waste any time hiding or anything. From my perspective, a lot of my youth was wasted in wanting to be something and not being brave enough to be it. But that's from my perspective. I think within the paintings, I don't know if you, you just see the flamboyance and, 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 and the happiness and I suppose there's a, a huge amount of strut and confidence and 
might necessarily be real. You know, these people might be incredibly underconfident in other aspects of their life, but within the nightclub scene, they are God. I think there's something shallow, yes, about that, but there's also something powerful. You know, that's what youth is about. Even if the work doesn't always come from a positive place within myself, I like to translate it into a positive image. Like my landscapes, when I moved down to Kerry, I couldn't get over how beautiful it was. And I knew I grew up here, but I never saw it in that way when I was young. It was just a landscape to my, you know, teenage angst, you know, a backdrop. I never, I never noticed it. And then I came back here in a different place and I just I was like, wow, you know, like, you couldn't paint this. I was like, the skies and everything was just so dramatic and beautiful. So I painted them for quite a long time and I painted landscapes and now I suppose that now I've been here for a good while and I'm used to the place. I'm now painting what's missing or what I've noticed is gone from my world. And I suppose in a year's time, I'll be painting something else. We live in a world, you know, an outside world. And that's what's important to me is not to live intellectually secluded. We've, we, we must know what goes on around us. I go to Andalusia quite regularly. I'm doing a painting, um, which is based on a still life group that I've set up in the studio, in different parts of the studio. Um, apples, oil lamps and uh, different aspects of the studio. But I've added to the painting um, um, cuttings from design magazines uh, to give off um, um, wrought iron and different uh, textures, uh, the um, carpet type textures that are very Eastern and Muslim. What I think is like a Spanish feel to them. Um, <laughs> so really it comes down to a, an excuse to paint the Spanish landscape mm -hmm. by way of a still life. There's no uh, philosophical reasons to this, it was mainly uh, colour and texture. This is another one of the series that I made on when I was in Andalusia. Um, it's a painting of the landscape, the desert landscape. The desert landscape is part of the painting. It's added to the painting in the way of the soil. Um, so therefore the landscape is part of my painting. Uh, but I went on from there because I became interested in um, the Andalusian poet. Uh, this is a homage to Federico Garcia Lorca. And uh, where is he buried? We don't know, none of us know. But we know he was murdered and buried in the desert around Andalusia, around Granada. Um, this little <laughs> squiggle here was an accident, but it, to me it has a, a surrealistic quality about the death of Lorca. He was a great liberal and he was unfortunately murdered in the one of the early murders of the Sp Spanish Civil War. Um, I'm an anti-war person, um, so <laughs> that inspires me to paint. If I can make a statement on my belief, and I can make an honest statement on the belief that interests me. It's only through truthful statements you'll make art. I just love North Kerry. It's somewhere very different, very different to where I used to live in England. Around every corner there's a picture. Every corner there's a tree leaning over the road or an old barn or a disused bungalow or um, the sun is coming up over the trees. You know, you, 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 literally there are hundreds of paintings just waiting to be done. I was down at this uh, little road um, yesterday morning. I looked up the lane and I just liked the view and this tree in the middle here. And that's what I've kind of made the centre of the picture. So the road leads you up and around and, and you see that there. That was my idea. Yeah, I, I think actually to a large extent it's just the actual experience of painting. 
and the fact that when you paint something it has a life it seems to take on a kind of a life which is different to uh, just what you see when you take a photograph or when you walk past something I love being I love being out in the open air just just be I have to say that being out in the open air even on a not a particularly nice day fresh air even if it's a bit cold uh, if the sun's shining uh, the clouds are scudding across the sky I just enjoy the whole experience really it's a kind of holistic experience painting and being out there at the same time living in my present surrounds um, as I have done for 10 years or so has a lot to do with how I create um, it's the peace it's the sound it's the birds and the trees it's the tranquility of the whole place it all gets in on your subconscious um, and the beach of course it gets in on you the patterns on the shoreline the seaweeds the colors of the seaweeds um, colors of the rainbow in seaweed if you look closely enough I prefer weed sometimes to a red rose you know the shape of grasses things like that uh, I much prefer wildflowers to cultivate it there's way, there's so much in them um, and of course the sound of the sea I can hear it from my bedroom that's lapping sometimes when it's very still you can hear the dolphins breaking water so I love all of that. My paintings are abstract, they're based on nature and spirituality. Um, my focus is more on the hardy perennials. God, um, death, rebirth. And I think if you look at my whole body of work since 98, you'll find that these come up again and again. To date I have about over a thousand paintings small and big. I like working this size now in oils, three by threes. The number three and seven has sig significance for me. I'll be counting the dots the whole time to see, to make sure I just leave three or seven. Three being the trinity for me and seven considered to be a holy number. It's the most used number in the Bible. It's always been in me to paint and I've created all my life.